What's up, potatoes? Farmer Dills here. Today, I wanted to talk about a tier list in Siege. Now, if you follow Siege, you know Velvet Shell is coming out soon. So I thought it'd be a good idea to get a tier list going now, so we can analyze the meta now and then see how it changes after it's released. Before we begin, let's do a little bit of a disclaimer because I think it's important. I base a lot of the tier list off of the level that I play at, so around Plat 3 and Diamond. But I also did some digging and research to see what pros are saying, and use their opinions to influence my tier list. And I think it goes without saying that a lot of this is subjective and personal opinion. I am also not basing this tier list off of solo queue whatsoever. We know Siege is a team game, so I'm going to give high priority to characters that work well with the team. As always, feel free to leave any feedback about the list, and let me know where you would put operators or if you agree or disagree with the list. But without further ado, let's get to the list. I'll start with attackers because in my opinion they're more interesting choices, and then I'll move to defenders. And I'll be starting with the lowest tier which is D, and ending with the highest tier which is S. To start off attackers we'll talk about tier D first. Tier D is, I hate to say it, it's trash tier. There aren't that many redeeming qualities about this tier, and it's extremely situational. So obviously to start it off, let's talk about Glaz. Glaz is really only good on one map, which is plain, and even then he's usually pretty easily countered. I just think all around he's just a subpar operator, and he really doesn't do many things well except for like, long range snipe. I mean, unless you're making a headshot montage, there's no real reason to pick him. And really that's it for tier D for attackers, they're pretty well rounded. The next tier is C. Tier C operators are situational picks that have their place and they're not horrible, but the meta kinda shits on them right now. The first operator in tier C is Montagna. Monty can do some cool things with his shield, especially after his buff, but it just doesn't pan out for him, especially at higher levels. Again, I'm pretty sure this is just a meta thing, but right now he's just not that good. The next operator is Fuse. Now Fuse was supposed to get better after his buff, but his death pucks essentially just started killing teammates easier. So now that his gadget is too unpredictable to use, what else does he have? His shield suffers the same disadvantage as Monty. And he's slow and really loud. I just don't think he's that good. The last operator for tier C is Blitz. Again, it's a shield thing this season, the meta just doesn't agree with him. His ability will make newer players panic, but experienced players know exactly how to deal with him. Not to mention the broken hitbox on his head. There's just too many cons to balance out the pros. And that rounds out tier C. The next tier is tier B. Tier B are again situational operators, but the meta actually agrees with them meaning they can actually have a good, meaningful impact on the game. The first operator in tier B is IQ. By itself, IQ's ability isn't that good, but with operators like Valkyrie and Pulse being used a lot, the meta kind of shifts her up the tier list. She's also 3 speed and in my opinion has some pretty good guns. The next operator for tier B is Buck. Now most people think that Buck and Sledge should be side to side, I don't think so. Buck is a noisier Sledge, he doesn't have the same grenades, and his breaching isn't as reliable. However, depending on where the objective is, he's still a strong pick and personally I like playing him. The next operator in tier B is Capitao. I actually had a really hard time placing Capi on this list, and that's mostly just because of where the objective is. He's basically a really strong smoke for the attackers, but he isn't really strong on every objective. In my opinion he's situational, but again you may disagree, like I said I had a hard time placing him. Anyways, that caps off tier B for us. The next tier is tier A. Tier A operators are safe picks that'll work well in almost every situation. To start off, tier A is Thatcher. Thatcher's gadget is always useful and his guns aren't bad either. And he's usually needed to make a good clean breach into the objective. He's just a really good supporting operator. The next op on tier A is Sledge. The reason Sledge is in tier A and Buck isn't is because Sledge has a good reliable breach. He also has really good guns and still kept his frag grenades. Those are huge pluses for Sledge. Twitch is the next operator for tier A. With her recent buff of getting her Twitch drone in the preparation phase, Twitch in my opinion has become one of the best attackers in the game. She was already pretty beef before with her guns, but the upgraded drone and the extra drone she gets makes her a tier A operator for sure. And the last operator for tier A is Blackbeard. I know a lot of people aren't happy with his nerf, but he's still in a really strong place if you use him to slow peek windows and hold down hallways and doorways. Yeah, maybe his aim down sight could use some work, but he's still a tier A operator. The next tier is tier S. Tier S operators are basically must pick operators. Like you can really never go wrong picking these operators. To start off tier S we have Thermite. Thermite's always been strong since the game came out. I mean being able to break down armored walls is huge. Opening up sightlines and really panicking the defenders is his specialty and his guns are really good too. 
the addition of Claymore to his kit really complements his playstyle as well. The second operator in tier S is Hibana. Hibana plays a similar role to Thermite, and in some ways she's better than Thermite at that role, especially creating small sight holes and not creating a doorway. It's good to limit the defender's movement, so sometimes it's a good idea to not have the entire wall open. Her gun is definitely not bad either, and I personally am a big fan of her shotgun. And that's really all for tier S. Now, you may be wondering, Farmer Dills, where's Ash? Well, see, Ash gets her own special category. We're gonna call that tier S+. This is basically god tier. Ash is fast, hard to hit, and hit registration is on her side all the time. Anyways, there you go, that's my tier list for the attackers. It'll be interesting to see what changes when the new operators are added. But enough about the attackers, let's get to the defenders. I think the defenders are a little bit less interesting than the attackers, so they're a little bit easier to place. But if you disagree, again, feel free to let me know. The first operator in tier D for the defenders is Tachanka. I feel like the Lord is going to smite me for doing this, but his turret isn't that great. I mean, the shield is nice, but for a game like Siege, being stuck in one place makes you predictable, which makes you easy to kill, so he's tier D. And actually, that rounds off tier D for the defenders. The first operator in tier C is Mute. Okay, I get it. Mute gadgets are actually pretty good against drones. And when you have his gadgets placed properly, he ends up being a pretty strong defender and you're happy to have him. But it's not often that Mute makes a huge impact on the game. He's kind of like Castle, where his gadget might help you win the round once or twice, but it's not consistent. And speaking of Castle, he's the next operator in tier C. I mean, yeah, he slows down attackers, but he's just so... meh. And hey, maybe you watch Narcoleptic Nugget's video on the castle trick, but I just don't think he fits that well into the meta right now. And personally, I've never had a moment where I said, man, it'd be nice to have a castle right now. Moving on to the next operator in tier C, it's Kavira. Now, originally, I had Kavira placed a lot higher on the tier list because I personally like to play her a lot, but she's just too easily countered at high level play. And don't get me wrong, if you have a coordinate team and you're a god tier Kavira, go ham. But most of the time, you end up sitting in a corner and you get hunted down by the other team. And without proper communications, your teammates won't let you know when they injured someone. I personally really like the concept of her character, but again, with the player base in the meta right now, it just doesn't pan out. Like, it just does not work. And a lot of people are going to be kind of iffy that she's placed so low, but again, I had her placed at like tier A at first. So moving her down here was a pretty big step. To round off tier C, we have Capcan. I still think Capcan's a pretty strong pick, especially for those last minute rushers. And he's pretty strong at high level play if they're a slow pushing team. But tier C is all about situational that the meta doesn't really agree with right now. And I think that's a good description for Capcan. He's pretty good at slowing down the other team, but he just doesn't see a lot of play in higher levels. Personally, I had a hard time placing Capcan as well. I kind of wanted to do tier B or C, but I thought he was a little bit lower end. To start off tier B for the defenders, we'll start with Pulse. Pulse is still a strong pick, especially with good communication, and even after his nerf, he's still a strong operator. Personally, I think he was buffed too much when he was buffed, so the nerf kind of brought him down to where he's supposed to be, and I think he's in a good spot now where he can still be countered, but he's still a really good pick. The next operator for tier B is Echo. I like Echo's guns, I love his gadget, and I think he's in a really good place. His gadget kind of makes you freak out like there's a bee around when you hear it, and with good communication and good use of his drone, he's an amazing ganker. Also, the drunk thing is really disorienting, and his gadget can make even a good experienced player panic. The next operator in tier B is our household Doc. After his buff allowing him to overheal himself and teammates, Doc became one of the best objective defenders. Also, it's not always that you get the revive off with his gun, but when you do it's at range and you can do it from safe. Indeed. That's huge. And good Doc players will know when to heal up right before a big push. Like, I just feel like Doc's never gonna go out of style, so hopefully I'm right about that when Velvet Shell comes out. To round off tier B, we have Frost. Frost traps are still really good. I mean, they essentially changed window breaching, in that players have to look down when they're breaching just to check for frost traps. You can still put them in random places and people still won't expect them. And her shotgun is still beast. I really like Frost as a character and I think she deserves to be in tier B for sure. To start off tier A for the defenders, we have Smoke. Smoke's area denial is still so strong, and now that he has impact grenades, he's a crazy ganker. And in the hands of an experienced player, Smoke is an absolute menace to deal with. Not to mention that if you let the round get to the last second, Smoke's gadget puts him at a huge advantage. The next operator in tier A is Bandit. Now, hear me out here. 
Bandit's gadget is better drone denial than mute. You can still kind of bandit trick thermite charges and heat bonded charges. And he's a 3 speed operator with a good shotgun and a good SMG. I know a few people are going to disagree with the bandit placement but I still think he's a beast and he still sees a lot of high level play. And the last operator to round out tier A is Bandit's bro Jaeger. His gadget is still invaluable in the objective. He still has one of the best guns in the game. And he's a 3 speed operator. What a menace to deal with Jaeger is. He's also one of the only operators I see consistently used to peak windows. So he's pretty good at delivering that early round advantage. Tier S for the defenders is going to be started off by Valkyrie. Even after Valk lost one of her cameras, she's still one of the strongest picks in the game. With a team that's communicating a lot, cameras that are out of the ordinary are so important. And if your team is good and doesn't tag all the time, you'll know where the attackers are and they won't know where you are. I mean, it takes a little bit of game knowledge about where to place the cameras, but at high level play that shouldn't be a problem. And last but not least, the last operator to round out tier S is Rook. Rook's armor is still an amazing buff to the team. His MP5 is still a great gun. And did I mention that his armor is a huge buff to the team? Honestly, you can't go wrong with a Rook pick. He probably has the biggest impact on the defenders next to Valk. Anyways guys, that is my defenders tier list. Again, feel free to let me know where you would put each operator, and if you disagree with any of my choices. My experience is coming from a Diamond PS4 and a Plat 3 Diamond PC. And I also looked into some stats from Pro League. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe and like. And again, thanks for watching. You crazy mother...